Hello! I wasn't planning to make this video, but I have never had so many requests for a video before. Um, so I thought, well, okay, I'll just make a sort of quick one on this topic that everyone is talking about to do with Micah Stafer, which is this interview. Immediately after I gave birth to my baby, I started doing eBay and I started being a super seller. I made tons of money. We were doing YouTube videos just for fun. We uploaded maybe three. It wasn't a real deal. And he looked at me and he said, I want you to quit eBay. And I was like, are you flipping kidding me? You want me to quit something that's making so much money and I could make so much more? And he's like, yeah, let's quit it. Wow. I want you to try something that I know could be a lot more lucrative. And I was just like, you're so flipping crazy. But I did it. This video went out in November 2018. So it was about a year and a half ago. And what year then did you launch that YouTube channel? So I started about three years ago. I don't know the year precise. I'm not a number person. I'm a chick. Yeah. So maybe 2015-ish <laughs> kind of. Okay. Yeah. We'll yeah. go with that. Excellent. And so... Micah comes across really differently. She's chewing gum. She seems to have... Um, a kind of attitude about her that she doesn't have in the other videos on her channel, even the videos that were made at around the same time. And I'm just like, am I doing the right thing? Am I going the right way? Am I being the best mama that I can? And Huxley is my son through and through. He's my baby boy and I am so glad that he is part of our family. I couldn't I couldn't do my day without him, like I said. For, for sure. Um, I think the biggest reason for my growth for my channel, I was never a lucky YouTuber. I didn't just get lucky. I had a lot of tactic, I guess I would say. Say that word, they're gonna be like, really? That's gonna take too much time, or I don't understand what you mean. But once you truly research, you find those little niches, and how I usually go about it is I'll look at like smaller channels and what's working for them, or I'll search, search a term and I will look at, hey, if a, it worked for a big channel, it's not going to benefit me. I need to look at, is it working for little people? Such a brilliant strategy. And I'm sure you've heard it before. Absolutely, yeah. We like to actually say research before you press record. Absolutely. People can come across a bit differently in different kinds of situations, but this is extreme. You know, she really does seem to come across as a completely different person. And that's what's going to happen if you're acting, you know, if you're playing a role. So, and, and that is typical of a narcissist, that there's a role that they play that gets them the, you know, the attention that they need from, you know, in that situation. And I think in Micah's case, not just the attention, but the subscribers and in more practical terms, money. You know, almost a half a million subscribers right now. Yes. What's also really impressive is how well you're, you're making a lot of money. And even, I think, for the ratios of your influence, uh, it's pretty impressive. And we're going to talk about some of those strategies. I started studying analytics really hard. My husband is the mastermind behind SEO. He is literally an SEO god. He is the only reason we started taking off. If you don't research, even if you put up a killer video, if nobody's searching it and YouTube doesn't like it, that's it. There is nothing more to that. But if you do your research and you do your research right, you could have a liquid gold mine and it could be insane. That little boy is liquid gold to my heart. And once you get that desirable and a lot of brands are kind of fighting for places, rates get a little bit higher. You get months and months locked in and it just, it really starts to work out in favor. When she's talking to somebody about this YouTube channel, she drops out of that character and she becomes someone who's trying to help other people to succeed at this business that she is succeeding at. She seems to me to be much more relaxed and much more natural now. One of the things that everyone's talking about is her answer to this question. Do you have a favorite failure? And how has maybe a failure in your life set you up for future success? So I wouldn't call it a failure, but I would call it something that was really, 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 really challenging. Um, we recently adopted a little guy from China. Definitely not a failure. But when we adopted him, he had a totally different diagnosis than what we were told. Um, we were told that he had a brain tumor and as a cancer nurse, I was comfortable with that moving forward. And he actually had severe brain damage, severe um, autism. 
and some severe delays that may mean that he may live with me for the rest of his life, something that we just literally were not ready for. Even though she said she wouldn't call this a failure, it was still the first thing that came to her mind when she was asked about a failure in her life. So what was the failure? It seems from what she's saying that the failure was her choice, that she picked the wrong child, you know, um, that she was expecting a child with a brain tumour and she got a child with autism. I think that most parents would go through some kind of a grieving process when they discover that their child is going to be reliant on them for life, you know, that they're never going to be independent. Their hopes for their child might be dashed, you know, for what kind of future they thought their child would have, but also for their own lives. She had found out he didn't have a brain tumour. So that, that kind of puts things in a different light because you'd think that she'd just be so relieved that he was okay. But, you know, um, being autistic and having lots of challenges because of that is, is surely so much better and so much of a relief um, compared to had he had a brain tumour. First of all, I used to be an RN, an oncology RN, and I just wasn't liking it. I was pregnant at the time, um, and I was taking care of cancer patients. I was just wasn't my jam. I was depressed. I was bummed out, and I needed to find a different out. So she said she was sick of working as a nurse in oncology, but she was thinking that she was going to have a child who had a brain tumour. Could it be that she wanted a child who had a brain tumour that wouldn't be around long, that she didn't have to be a nurse again to someone with cancer, at least for very long? In other words, it could have been that she thought he was going to die soon, that she would get lots of support on YouTube and make lots of money first, and then he would die and she wouldn't be burdened with the responsibility anymore. It could also be that she was convinced that he would survive his brain tumour. Um, you know, that she would get this special needs child. They're, they're apparently, it's much quicker apparently to get a child with special needs when you're adopting internationally. It takes much longer if the child doesn't have special needs. So this way she would get a child who um, had a brain tumour that if she thought could easily be um, fixed, then he'd be fine and healthy. So so I do think that it it, it might be a good idea to just uh, add that to the to all of the possibilities that she might actually have thought that he'd be okay. I mean, she does. I, I've said in previous videos that she does show signs of magical thinking. That she seems to believe that um, Huxley's problems can be fixed as long as she is in charge. So it could be that she was really optimistic about the idea of him having a brain tumor. That, I guess, you know, that's the less disturbing way to look at this. So, uh, you know, it reminds me of the post she put on Instagram where she wanted a child with special needs that people would think was um, a lot of work, but actually wouldn't be. A third possibility is that she didn't know either way. She didn't know if he would live or die. If she was um, working in oncology before, then she'd have known that things can go either way with cancer. Maybe she didn't know and that wasn't really an issue for her. She wanted to adopt this child. Um, she was gonna get lots of great feedback on YouTube and then she wouldn't have this responsibility for long, either because he died or because he was well again. For most people, they would be very cautious about adopting a child who might die. It would be a, a very painful experience to go through. It's clear that she does lack empathy. There are lots of examples in the videos I've put out that show that. But to what extent is she completely immune to a child dying? This video is coming to an end quite suddenly because I'm still editing and I didn't want to leave it another day. So I'm just going to put this one out now and I'll put out another video um, soon. You know, it'll be quicker than usual. And that's going to look at Micah and her relationship with her daughter, Kova, because there's quite a lot about, you know, you can see 
from the footage you know in her videos you can you can kind of get a sense of what their relationship's like and I think it's really interesting so I'm going to put that out and I still I haven't forgotten you know after I've put these two out the next one is going to be how narcissistic are you so I'm still going to put that one out so um if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video